Arden perceiving the Arcturians who are hire me um, in that kind of light cloud, cloud of light, sparkly light cloud, and I kind of reached out and touched my heart. Um, more like a lightning bolt, if you understand. Um, oh, I'm, I'm being shown new earth. Uh, um, but it's very hard to translate it. Do you want to yeah. ask some questions and help me translate it down? I just know I'm being shown it, but it's uh, not perceptible to my third dimensional perceptions. Uh, I... How... How is the Noah Earth or New Earth perce perceived through our higher senses? It's, as of now for me, it's a feeling of a knowing mm -hmm. similar to the feeling of the knowing when I am in communication with higher dimensional beings. Mm -hmm. um, I have a clearer vision of myself on the ship because I have written it. And so I ran, I, when I've written it, I've run the experience through my 3D mind. Uh -huh. And so therefore my 3D mind is more able to create pictures. Uh -huh. Would you be able to describe your your physical appearance on, on over Earth? I, uh, it's a light body. Mm. Um, it looks humanoid. Mm. It uh, doesn't have the details of a physical form. Mm. For those details are having to do with the construct of that frequency. Uh, within this frequency, within this frequency, everything is flowing. I and right now I'm only calibrated to my body, so. Perhaps if I really calibrate my body, I can see more of the rest. Um, it's androgynous and or my complement and I can choose to have the illusion of separation, but the connection is always continuous. Much like it is with my husband, who is my compliment. Mm. Uh, and he's actually meditating right now, so that's interesting. I have to ask him what his meditation is like. <laughs> um, and so now I'm going back to the image that I've already seen of myself, like on, it's almost as if I'm on a ledge. Mm -hmm. And it's still in a place, it's all, almost like the, through the darkness is the light. Uh -huh. And so this place, this threshold is, is very dark. It's like it's midnight. Uh -huh. And, but we can perceive each other because we can see the light bodies. And I'm thinking that one of the reasons why it's um, so dark is so that we can get that juxtaposition. Uh -huh. uh, because it's dark, we can see the light bodies more. Uh -huh. And this is what we call threshold earth, threshold Gaia, uh -huh. whatever we choose to call it. Uh -huh. And I 
it's almost like I, when somebody's coming out of a deep pool and you reach down and help them pull themselves out of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, so they need to, everyone needs to kind of get there on their own. But when they get right to that final ledge, for whenever, whenever there is, ah, mm -hmm. whenever we come to a completion, before that completion, we have to go through this final darkness, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to make sure that we've absolutely got everything. Mm. It's like when you move out of a house you're renting, and I've done this twice, I just left a bunch of crap and left it to them to take care of. Mm. Um, but if we're selling the house, we have to get out every single thing. Mm. Everything. Mm -hmm. And so we have to go through this darkest night just before dawn mm -hmm. to get go in to our 3D, 4D self and see if there's anyone left that needs to be assisted. Any um, components of our contract that have not yet been fulfilled. I understand. And I, I'm hearing that some components, if we transmute ourselves before some components of the contract are fulfilled, we can okay. fulfill them from a higher frequency. Uh -huh. For the most important thing is for those of us who have had a, a ongoing physical experience and understand and know and live the difficulties of the third dimensional reality that are somehow able to move through that process of ascension just as all the ascended masters they have left behind their journals their books their words their meditations you know as a roadmap for others mm -hmm. to follow mm -hmm. So I'm feeling this book as a uh, as one of those because it take brings in everything. Yes. Um, the the synthesis of my mission. Um, oh, I'm feeling the ship so much. I'm just going to touch into Earth, but then I need to take a break on the ship. Um, that's what I'm hearing. I need to go back to the ship for a while. Mm. You know, mm. we, we both, you know, we need we need to go to the mothership for a while. And there's mm. not time there, and there's not time on New Earth, so it doesn't matter. But, ah, oh, this horrible homesick I'm feeling. Mm. Oh, so homesick. And it wasn't for New Earth because if New Earth was not, I had not, that wasn't what I missed. I hadn't experienced that yet, you know. So homesick for the ship. And mm -hmm. see, uh, within my Palladian self and my and Arcturian self, um, and even my Antarian, and even my evolved Draconian self, and my Syrian self, all, all of us have been way past being planetary bombed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Okay. Once we do the ascension, then we we move into our 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 mobile expression, oh. <laughs> our mobile the mothership, which has yeah. very often has the, the essence. And New Earth and and mothership Gaia are really the same being. I'm not sure. Let me see. Yeah, new new Earth, fifth dimensional Earth is it's not in the matrix. It's not in the three D matrix. It's not in the the star maps of the third dimension, etc. Uh -huh. All right. Um, it's not in, in the matrix. It's it's in this other world. Oh my God, this other world! Wow. <gasps> Whew, hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> feels really good. 
feels uh, really good. Uh, I've had this a couple of times. I usually need someone to give me a boot up, so thanks, Mary, uh, for the welcome. grounding field. Explaining the other world. Well, it's it's within the now. There, there isn't time, there isn't distance, there isn't separation. It's all within our consciousness. And, and our ship is our consciousness, and we, all the members of the ship, work together to create the package, the, the, um, the thought form of the mothership. See, now I understand what the last articles on thought forms and consciousness was about. Uh -huh. In a way, this would likely be some form of gamma consciousness what I'm experiencing right now. Uh -huh. And it's above the theta, definitely, but it's very quiet. And so uh, some of, I think you had a question about gamma, consciousness being stiller and smaller. It's very quiet. Uh -huh. it's, it's all here now. So... Is it the void? No, it's alive. Mm. The void is alive. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes, it's alive. But I'm still in that uh, darker place. Mm. Um, because I still have an earth vessel. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not done. Excuse me, what? I would not like to ask a question about and the threshold? Yes, please. To describe. Mm -hmm. um, what comes to mind is that we also talked about earlier about that particular moment in Interstellar, the movie. Yes. Where the main character lets go yes. and dives into the black hole, facing seeming death. Is that, is it comparable to? To that? Yes. Yes, and, and then he, he could go into the now of his daughter yeah. dying. He yes. could take on a, a, a third dimensional envelope. Mm. From this position, we can take on envelopes if we choose. Yes. Um, and I will return to my envelope. And I feel that envelope still. You know, I am yes. still, I am very much in connection with my envelope because I, I need to keep it nourished. I couldn't go this long without oxygen. Yeah. Uh, when I leave my envelope, it will be different. Mm -hmm. But I'm not supposed to leave my envelope now. I don't want to leave my envelope now. Mm -hmm. I like my life. The interesting thing, when we come to the point of ascension, we have a great deal of creative abilities and, and we'll be able we're able to create a really beautiful, wonderful life. Yes. And so people are thinking, oh, I want out of here. It's like, no, no, wait, wait a second. That's not how you get out of there because you haven't graduated. Yes. And, and, um, and I, I can see now from here, oh, I feel the Kundalini again. Oh, thank you. A little reminder so I don't fall back. Um, oh, you know, I think the theta, the theta kundalini is where you z zoom out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the gamma mm -hmm. is where you are within the kundalini. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Because the kundalini is our light body. We are in our light yeah. body. Mm -hmm. Theta is a um, is a journey. Theta is a journey. That's shamans. Mm. I call it the shamans frequency. All right. Mm -hmm. And delta is the frequency of of, of death. Mm. And and people have died, but they come back. Mm -hmm. um, and they can remember their death. It's the log out frequency. So, it would it be correct to say that theta is when you sit on the 
observer's chair. Mm -hmm. And the gamma would be like to dive into the Kundalini and become it. Yes. Yes, I would say that. And, mm -hmm. and the delta is where you, if you're ready to release your envelope. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your, your body, you know. Yeah, way, right? yeah. You, you release your attachment to your physical body. And so I feel this line, and I understand what they talk about, the silver cord, which is actually your light body cord, is actually a light cord. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I feel it. I feel that it's um, connecting down down through the frequencies and in, into the core of dear Gaia, because I, I don't know if I'd be able to stay if I didn't have the love for Gaia. Yeah. I mean, I'm not young. I've had a long life. But I know I'm not done. I would like to ask something else. Yes. And like, um, I mean, you are experiencing the threshold. Yes. Uh, are you also able to witness the actual transmutation from threshold to to being light body? Uh, let me tell you what I am experiencing, and I'm not sure how to answer that, okay? Yeah. Um, what I am experiencing is I feel this trail, and I feel the trail inside, just like they always say. I feel it yeah. inside. I mean, I feel my whole kundalini, it's like, it's, it's got a resonance. It's not forcing up and down. It's still. It's quiet. Um, and it's that attachment. And I feel myself within that, that, that dark place before, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, and I don't know if this is for everyone, but for me, my first yearning and my first connection is uh, the mothership. I, I just need to go home to that home first. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I really need, I, that's what I will do. I'll go home there. Mm -hmm. um, and then my next home would be the core with the Lemurians. Mm. And, and then the next, uh, and, and see that, okay, that is picking up fragments because the, the kind of the first ones through, they're, they're, they're doing the, the editing, so to speak, okay? And, and so we get to this state of consciousness and then we need to move back up to the mothership and go into the regeneration chamber once more time and commune with our whole reality there on on the mothership and feel that um, wonderful unity consciousness that is consistent and persistent for infinity living beyond time. And then when we get that feel very, very deeply, 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 then because we are within that light body form, we instantly go into the core of Bhava Gaya and into, and, and Sana Kumara, he's, he's returned um, as the logo, and Kutumi, beloved sweet, sweet Kutumi, is still there as the locals there are working with Gaia and the Lemurians and the Atlanteans that were of the the higher order that did ascend. Um, and we, we share that information with Gaia to assist her, you know, from her core. Because she has to ascend from her core just like we ascend from our core. Her kundalini. Our kundalini is in a straight line because we're an up and down humanoid. Her kundalini is a circle within her core crystal because she is a circular being. But she is absolutely a living being. Much more evolved than us because she has completely gone beyond all need 
of humanoid evolution and right. even beyond need of, of evolutions within motherships, etc. Mm -hmm. And has moved now from the evolution of being a planet and and as she ascends she will move into a more galactic state. And her okay now this is interesting information. Uh -huh. Now I'm, I'm going to tell you the question that I'm having and ask you to ask me, okay? Uh -huh. The question that I'm having, okay, so if if Gaia, if the being Gaia is ascending from her planetary form into her next octave up, which is her galactic form, then what is New Earth? Okay, so let me get centered, and I'll have you ask that, okay? <laughs> I think I got part of the answer, but it helps when somebody outside wouldn't, you know, when you ask. Okay, let me get back. <sighs> I think this is the longest time I've sustained this frequency. Thank you for grounding me, Nuri. I don't think I could have had somebody grounding me. <sighs> okay, are you ready to ask the question? Yes. Given that Gaia is ascending from her planetary form into a galactic form, what is Nova Earth then? It's much like a space station. As humanity is moving beyond the confines of Earth and creating a space station, which they have had for a very, very long time, since uh, NASA continued, like in the movie, it, it continued, uh, and it, it had to be well, well hidden from the Illuminati. But the, there is the, the portal to Mars, there are the space stations, there are yeah. all of the yeah. things do exist. And New Earth is much like a space station. A space station is a place that you go in between for spaceships that can only make it as far as a space station and back and space station and back and space station and back. And so New Earth is the place for people that can expand their consciousness to 5D Earth and, and back and 5D Earth and back and 5D Earth. And just as, oh, this is interesting, just as space stations are obsolete to Palladian worlds, Syrian worlds, Andromedan worlds, for they no longer need that in-between place, mm -hmm. that new Earth, space station Earth, will join the galaxy. Oh, this. I've read many places that New Earth would be in a different galaxy, and I could not figure out how that would be. Oh. New Earth will be in Gaia's galactic form. Oh. So the real New Earth is in Gaia's galactic form. The satellite New Earth will be with in this um, this solar system, this uh, Milky Way galaxy. Does, do you understand? Does that make sense? This, well, satellite New Earth is obviously a metaphor, but could you make it a little bit more... Yeah, the could, New Earth, the, the satellite New Earth, is uh, it it resonates to the Milky Way, and it resonates to the position within the solar system, yeah. which is where physical Earth is. Now, this is the same way for Venus. So, if you look at the solar system, 
and yeah. you take a picture in your mind of the solar system and you see it as we have always seen it, then you take like a, a fifth dimensional perception of it, mm -hmm. you will see that there is a fifth dimensional Venus. Mm -hmm. There will be a fifth dimensional Earth. Mars is working on it as well. There is absolutely a fifth dimensional Jupiter. The outer planets, Neptune's working on it. Pluto isn't really part of this whole system. Mm -hmm. And the sun is... It's, it's ready to transmute as well. 